Uh, we are getting ready to have um, Team Challenge come up, and Team Challenge is an organization that we support in all different kinds of ways, and uh, very, very important, and I'm glad that they're here today. Y'all give a round of applause for Spencer as he comes up here. Good morning, church. Uh, it's a privilege and an honor to be here, and so I just want to start off by saying that. We thank you, Pastor Lee and Crossroads Community Church. Uh, this is a blessing to be here with you guys and to share hope. Uh, more importantly than anything else for me, I can tell you I'm a graduate of Adult and Teen Challenge, and uh, that was one thing that was completely missing from my life when I stepped into it. Uh, I remember figuring out what, what's going to be a verse that I stand on, and I knew I was hopeless, and so I started looking at verses on hope, and one spoke to me specifically. And I want to share that with you. It's Romans 15, 13. It says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I am uh, super excited. It's not just me that's here. I've got some of my brothers in Christ that have joined me. And so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and have them come on stage. Uh, in the meantime, I graduated. Yeah, go ahead. Just welcome up. This program is not your typical treatment center. Uh, if anyone has known somebody that's gone through treatment, maybe you've gone through it yourself. This is called Adult and Teen Challenge. And so there, this isn't about your comfort hotel stay where you got masseuses and all that stuff and your personal chef. This place is designed to work out the kinks and fill it up with our Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ. And so with that, it has proven to be more successful. And I can tell you as a testament to myself, I've been in 10 treatment centers. Not bragging about that at all. Trust me. I remember the guy next to me saying he'd been in 13. And I said, I will never be that person. And here I am 10 times later. But I can tell you a program that has filled with the Holy Spirit and teaches God and Jesus Christ and everything with it is what I needed in my life to be sustaining and a, and a productive member of society again. So without further ado, I'm going to have my brothers introduce themselves and then we'll get going. Good morning, everybody. My name is Russ Savage. I'm 33 years old. I've been in the program for uh, six months. Uh, the verse I stand on is uh, Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart and let everything flow from it. Good morning, guys. <clears throat> My name is Fernando Garcia. I'm 28 years old. I'm from Brownsville, Texas. Uh, I'm in the restoration portion of the program, which I've been in for 30 days now. And uh, one of the verses I stand on is uh, 1 John 5, 4, which says, uh, for everyone who has been born of God has overcome the world, and the victory that has overcome the world is our faith. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lamas Valencia Hyphen Thompson. I'm from Aztec, New Mexico. I'm 21 years old. I've been in the program for five months. Uh, the verse I stand on is James 4 7 through 8. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double minded. Good morning, family. My name is Robert. I'm 37 years old. I'm from Floresville, here in Texas. I've been in the program seven months. The verse that I stand on is Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may pr prove that which is the perfect, good, and acceptable will of God. Good morning. I'm Dominic Gonzalez. I'm from Española, New Mexico. Uh, I've been in the program about eight months. The verse I stand on is Zechariah 4, 6. Not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Uh, good morning, church. My name is Andrew Bacon. Uh, I'm 22 years old. I'm from Seattle, Washington. Uh, verse that I stand on is James 1, 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because the testing of your faith pr produces perseverance. Thank you. Uh, my name is Garrett Vance. Uh, I'm 23 years old. Uh, I'm from Cleveland, Texas. Uh, I've been in the program for four months. And the verse that I stand on is Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Amen. All 
All right, let's give these guys a round of applause. Here in just a, a little bit, you'll hear some testimonies from some of these guys. Uh, but before that, I do want to share that society as a whole has a bit of a dilemma. Okay? Many of us, unfortunately, get plagued by something that has a stronghold in their life. Commonly, we see drug addiction and alcoholism, but that's not just it. It could be pornography. It could be your phone. It could be anxiety, depression. If it's got a stronghold in your life, what I want you to know is there is a place that can help you get set free. For me, God used Adult and Teen Challenge to do that exact thing, and I'm so grateful that we get to share it with you. So if you're not familiar with Teen Challenge, we are a 12-month faith-based program for men, women, and even adolescents that struggle with any type of life strongholds, right? So we house everybody for an entire year. We don't work with insurance, so it's not a place where you have to have money to come into the program. In fact, all we ask is $1,500 if somebody wants to come in, and some people don't even have it. We don't turn them away, okay? So this is a place where somebody can come that is broken and beat up and be turned into something that is beautiful and completely blessed. And so uh, we, are, we are a living testimony to that, and uh, I just want to continue to say back in 2019, there was a study that was done on alcohol, drug, and suicide deaths was 156,000 people in the United States. That's a, that's a terrible number. My grandfather committed suicide. My stepsister committed suicide. Addiction has plagued my family, um, and, and I'm in this position to turn it around. Uh, also, yesterday we had thankfuls. We share thankfuls every Saturday at our campus, and one of the things that I asked the guys was, who in here, based on the things that they were doing in their past, should be dead by now? And everybody raised their hands because we've lived a past that the enemy had control of. But by the grace of God, we've been set free and we're moving forward in this lifetime to share the good news. So uh, there, there was a dilemma, but there was also a solution. And we know it to be our Lord and Savior. So uh, praise God that you allow us again to come out here. I want to talk about five things that our program does. The first thing is it addresses destructive habits. Romans 12.2 says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In that, I want to think about the pattern, the word pattern. That's not just a one-time thing. It's a continuation of something that gets instilled in an individual. That was something that held me down for a really long time. But these programs that only are 30 or 45 days just begin to scratch the surface. The Dolan Teen Challenge is a year-long program where you learn healthy patterns to instill in your life for the rest of it. The second thing that we work on is healing personal wounds. If you uh, look at the prison system just in general, and I, I, there's, I don't know the statistics exactly off the top of my head, but if you ask how many of their fathers were in their lives, the number is very, very low. A lot of people that struggle with addiction have a past and th things have happened to them that there was no control over, okay? But now that we know the difference, we have choices to make. So we don't allow the, th the things that have transpired in our past to hold us down anymore. The lies that we lived by are no longer the truths that we live by. We live by the truth that is found in God's word. So in this, we have a class called The Ultimate Journey that our men go through and explore and be able to disassociate from the man that used to hold them down and step into that new creation that Christ has called them to be. Beautiful stuff. The next thing is we develop character. So James, uh, I'm sorry, I'm lying to you. Romans 5, 3 to 5, that's what it is. Uh, it says, not only this, but we also rejoice in sufferings knowing that suffering produces endurance and endurance character and character hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Again, this is a process, developing character with integrity, with patience, with tolerance, with love is something that a lot of us weren't used to and it takes time. And again, just uh, very grateful that we're able to share that this place exists and that God is in this transformation business that he's in. Step four, uh, we have his life skills training. When somebody goes through this program, uh, you will see that 
Uh, we have uh, several different areas that they're able to develop and to grow in. The first one is going to be their foundation in Christ. It's no longer built on sand, but it is on solid rock. So we are building a foundation that is not going to be washed away. Uh, it, is a, it is a privilege and an honor to do that. In the third phase of the program, which is the last five months that somebody is in our program, they have a job out in the world. They're getting ready for their departure back into the world and be missionaries wherever they're called, whether it be in the secular workforce or even a pastor at a church, you name it, it happens. And the fifth thing is going to be reentry assistance. So in this, they graduate at minimum of 12 months, and then this is just the beginning of a lifelong race. And so with that, we just want to make sure that we set people up for success. And programs I've been in before, it's 30 days and you're out. The next thing is kind of unknown, but here we work to develop a solid plan where people know what church they're going to be a part of and are already hopefully participating in. They know where they're going to be living. They know where they're going to be working. They have a cushion, a financial cushion that they're able to step out into the world with, and they're much better set up for success. All that to be said, a lot of things have happened. In 2019, I read that statistic, but we know that shortly thereafter, the pandemic happened. Uh, we know that that didn't help addiction in any way, shape, or form. However, God is still doing it. He's moving. And so I want to show a quick video. It's a campus update video that shows things that have been happening over the several, past several years and the way that God's moving at Adult and Teen Challenge. Hello, my name is Austin Bauman. I'm the men's director at Adult and Teen Challenge of Texas in San Antonio. This has been a tough year, but with you by our side and with the help of the Lord, we have seen unbelievable growth in our programs, our staff, and most importantly, the men and women that we serve. During COVID, with a dedicated team of staff and enhanced safety measures, we were able to keep our doors open. Even during these uncertain times, we continue to be a safe haven where our students' lives can be restored, transformed, and renewed. Last year, we opened the doors of a beautiful 6,000 square foot building, which is now home to all of our crucial program services. Within these walls, men spend time in classrooms, studying Christ-centered recovery curriculum that brings healing and hope. They also spend time in our lecture hall where they receive powerful, life-changing teachings from seasoned pastors and faithful volunteers. In our advising room, students meet one-on-one -on -one with their mentor every month, receiving personalized advising and encouragement. They also participate in a 13-week course called The Ultimate Journey, where the students identify crippling lies they've come to believe in each season of their life. And together as a group, we help them replace it with truth. It's here that the journey begins and all of our students as they find a place for new beginnings, a place to discover who they are, how God sees them, and how they can relate with others. Our students celebrated as we cut the ribbon on a beautiful sports court. They love shooting hoops on the state-of-the-art court. Inside of our third phase home, men take the next steps in their walk as they find employment and in the local community and begin to work and save money. It's during this time they study a re-entry curriculum aimed at equipping each student with the tools for success outside the program. We've made exciting updates in our wood shop where students learn to create beautiful crafts. Each of these pieces is handmade scrap wood, symbolic of the incredible change that happens in the lives of the students who were once nearly thrown away on a scrap pile. But when God got a hold of it, He transformed it into something beautiful. It was an exciting day when we moved into our beautiful new dorm building, which more than doubles the number of women we're able to serve. This 44-bed dormitory has an incredible bathroom setup that our ladies love and room for dining and fellowship. More importantly, it has opened up space for us to launch a new program serving pregnant women and moms with children in the existing home. This is such an important victory for our city. Bear County has more babies born withdrawing from drugs than any other county in Texas. Alongside the creation of a program to help moms, we'll be opening a Montessori school on our campus for daycare aged children, which will serve the kids in our program and the community around us. It'll be another incredible tool that will help in the healing process of families 
and help close the gap in recovery services available to moms with kids. With you, we're doing this important work together. Thank you for your support. Amen. Uh, that's why I just God is still in the move with everything shutting down. Adult and Teen Challenge still in that time was thriving because of only what God can do. Uh, what I want to share with you now here is I'm, I'm going to bring up one of our, our brothers here in just a second to share. But uh, Brother Tomas is one of my advisees, and I've got a relationship with his mother, too, to be able to talk. And, and one of the things that Tomas has been very hopeful for was that he would have an impact on his family. We can't change really anybody else, but the way that we choose to live can be an example. They say sometimes people don't need to hear you preach a sermon, they need to see you live one. And Brother Tomas has been doing a really good job, and I asked him permission to share this. His mom sent me a text message, and she knows this too. <laughs> and she said, I'm beyond proud of him. He inspires me to have a better relationship with our Lord and Savior, makes me want the same peace in having that thirst for the Lord. And that's all talking about the work that has been happening in Tomas. And so without further ado, I want to bring up Brother Tomas to share his testimony. Uh, so um, my name is Tomas once again. Um, I grew up in a middle class family pretty much. Um, my life, you know, looking back at it now, I'm going to be more honest and transparent. Um, I kind of hid a lot of things. Uh, me and my cousin, we did stuff when I was kids, and it created confusion. Uh, it made me very lustful, in a sense, being touched and everything as a child. And uh, the older I got, it just made me crave stuff outside of myself. I couldn't find inner peace completely. So I started seeking out drugs by the age of 15. Um, started smoking weed. Couldn't find pleasure in that. Moved out of my parents' house by age 17. Started living on my own. Um, then it went from that to moving all the way to Texas, trying to find another place, my happiness outside of myself besides God. And then it started making alcohol and everything while I was in high school already, starting to get drunk and everything. Everyone thought it was cool, influential, whatnot. Still didn't find peace, still didn't find satisfaction in that. Tried to go to college, became a failure. Um, I lost my virginity to a girl who had a purity ring. It meant nothing. Uh, she meant nothing to me. Is like she made me feel so destroyed, and I felt like I ruined myself with God, our relationship. So then afterwards, um, I just lived by myself, and I went down the road of doing drugs, as much drugs as I could, um, amphetamines, drinking, smoking, just nonstop, all the time. Uh, working like 80 hours so I don't have to think, just zombied out. Um, I even like started writing a book on it because I just didn't know any way to express myself besides to myself at that point and didn't find satisfaction there either. I was just having promiscuous women come in and out of my life. It was just daily, really nothing. And then um, as time went on, I had to move out of my apartment because there was no work, nothing. COVID happened, so I went and lived with my Thea. And um, after that, in Jordanton, Texas, and um, it wasn't good living with my family. I mean, I was bringing issues, especially with me still doing drugs and whatnot. There was like, you know, like a spirit there that just divided us and everything. And then um, I went to go live with my friend in Dilly, Texas. And I couldn't keep a job. I wasn't stable by any means. I thought I was, but in reality, I was just broken and lost in a lot of pain. I would call out to God, but it's like no one was going to show up for me because that's not reality. Reality is you got to fix yourself. And um, it just got worse. I lost my job in Dilly and I tried to go to college in Uvalde. Me and my friend got an apartment. And then uh, this is when it started getting twisted where... I had people that were billionaires I worked for over there, and um, they were a part of the occult and everything. They offered me to be in porn. They offered me to be in a movie. They offered me a million dollars for my own alcohol company, and they also offered me a wife, and 
I didn't want any of that because there was no satisfaction. I didn't feel anything that I needed anymore. I just wanted the drugs anyway, so really I was just pointless of them even offering these things. And um, my friends betrayed me. They let me get drugged pretty much while I was at work. Um, I was doing tarot cards and stuff as well because I loved knowledge and I was seeking so much of it. And um, there was no satisfaction in that either. Then um, went back home. My parents, they already kind of knew about it and everything. Uh, my dad was part of the occultic and everything, kind of explained that to me and whatnot. They were me in the mental hospital. Um, really, it was so mad. I was so lost. Didn't know what to do anymore. Didn't really want to live. And then God kind of brought me a satisfaction of making me want to move back to Texas once I got a little bit of money. And I moved back. And um, I still tried to do it on my own will. Tried going back to my old lifestyle with one of the people, one of my friends from high school from Divine. His name was Cole. And um, his mom passed away. And after she passed away, she was like a Christian and everything. I just, there was nothing there between me and him anymore. So I don't know. Um, God like told me, go back to your Thea. Like she will help you. So I did. And um, I, at that point, I was just broken and lost all the way. I had no relationships with anyone, no friends, no one. And um, I just wanted to be with God, really. I even wrote it down inside my notebook. And um, afterwards, um, God sent me over to Team Challenge, and um, I couldn't ask for anything better. I may have lost everything in the world, but I feel like I gained everything, truly. I mean, all the hurt, all the brokenness and everything, it, it makes me speak really what I was holding down deep down inside, and now I can let it all out. And I hope people can speak up about things as well, because keeping secrets doesn't help you or anyone else. It just, it makes you suffer more, and suffering is not good unless it's <sighs> telling the truth once you can. So thank you guys for letting me tell my testimony. God bless. Hello, my name is Rusty. Uh, I've been in and out of drugs since I was 18, in and out of jail since I was 18. I did five years in prison for manufacturing and delivering drugs. I lost my son, I lost my daughter. I lost my grandparents, my brother almost died due to, due to drugs. I got out in 2021, went to Teen Challenge in Midland where I'm from, did nine months, ended up leaving there. Fell on my face and then a friend from Teen Challenge called me and said, uh, are you done running? Are you done running from your past? Are you done running from everything? And I said, yeah, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get back on my feet and surrender. He's like, well, get on the bus and go to Teen Challenge in San Antonio. So I got here at 2 o'clock on a Monday. I've been here for seven months. And it's been a blessing because I got the relationship back with my son. And my daughter is coming back into my life after eight years being gone. Uh, but I extended my stay into the program, I'm doing the associate program, so I can be a testament, living testament for God and myself and for my family. Thank you. Amen. Yeah, there are uh, several paths that somebody can pursue when they come into Teen Challenge and decide to move on to the next thing. What Rusty is doing is what he said is an associate's program. Those are people that are geared towards ministry. Uh, so in the associates program, they actually work on getting credentialed um, and will become a pastor hopefully one day and to be able to continue to spread the good news to everybody. Um, and so uh, it's just so amazing. Every single one of us has a past, but we cannot let shame and the enemy hold us down to the way that we were. We are, again, new creations in Christ, and we are moving forward forward in this lifetime. And so uh, we are not bad people, right? We've suffered some major things that have happened in life and, and begin to live by the lies that we were told as a child. And that shaped and molded who we had become. But when we finally got a hold of the truth, we decided to choose him fully. And so uh, praise God. But uh, the next thing that I want to talk about it, real quick is prayer. 
uh, we, we got here because somebody was probably faithfully praying for us. Uh, we were in our mess, we were lost, we had no relationships, we had nothing, nobody, but somebody out there was praying for us. And one of the ways that we can give back is to pray for y'all. And so I really encourage that at the end of this, we have a table set out uh, in the lobby area, and I would really love it if there's anything that you need prayer for or you know somebody who needs prayer for, please stop by and let us do it either right then. We have prayer cards where you can write down your prayer request, and our guys pray every day for an hour. Uh, they got 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at lunchtime, and again, five minutes at the end of the night, and we get these cards and the guys pray over them. And so if there's anything, again, that is inside of your heart that we need to pray for, we would be more than happy and love, we would love to do it. So please do that. Uh, another thing that I want to talk about is that this is, it's, it's not just like you were talking about earlier. It's not just a what can we get out of this we want to be able to give, right? So that's one way that we give. I want to highlight student sponsorship. Uh, when I came in the program, I had a very, very strained relationship with my family. My dad, every time I called him, was angry, and, and that led to a, a period of silence where I didn't talk to him for a while. But lo and behold, from an outreach similar to this, somebody decided to sponsor me. And I remember getting a letter in the mail from somebody that I didn't even know that told me that they were thinking about me and they were praying for me. And that moment really affected me at my core to show me the love of Christ through other people. And so one of the ways that we come out here to, to support is through student sponsorship. If you feel it in your heart at any point in time to sponsor one of these young men or any of the men that we have back on campus or even the Women's Center, I just want you to know that that's an amazing way to come alongside somebody who may have absolutely nobody to help guide them through this journey. You can even show up at graduations and baptisms and, and all sorts of neat stuff. Uh, what I do want to do is show the uh, sponsorship video, which gives you a little bit more insight to that. And then I'll have one more brief testimony, and uh, then we'll begin to wrap it up. So sponsorship video. Adult and Teen Challenge of Texas is a Christian drug and alcohol recovery program for men, women, families, and teens that God is using to transform lives. The first drug I got introduced to was cocaine, actually. Um, and that led to marijuana. It did progress very fast from the age of 16 to 18. And by the end of that graduation, I was physically addicted to sedatives, uh, your benzodiazepines, any of your prescription pills, all those. He took all my worries, all my stresses, and turned them around into a, such a beautiful situation. I was broken, and now I'm together. Graduating from Adult and Teen Challenge of Texas is no easy feat. It requires making a year-long commitment to this life-changing discipleship program. Our students are faced with spiritual battles on a daily basis, and every encouragement makes a difference. We want to invite you to be a part of their success. We want to invite you to become a student sponsor. When you sponsor a student at Adult and Teen Challenge, you are partnering with an individual who is becoming a new creation. When you sign up, we will assign you to one of our students and send you a photo and profile of the student that you will be sponsoring. Every few months, you will receive an update about your student's progress so you can continue to pray for them and see that beyond your financial support, you are helping to change their life. You will have opportunities to meet and encourage your student at Adult and Teen Challenge events, and when your student completes the program, you will receive a personal invitation to attend and celebrate at their completion ceremony. Most of all, we urge you to write and encourage your student. Your letters will remind them that someone cares and that their community supports them. Your prayers will help move the obstacles in their path and help them stay committed on their journey towards freedom. Many students say that the letters and notes they received gave them the hope and encouragement they needed at just the right time. I got the card in the mail on a day where I was just ready to give up and it gave me all the encouragement I needed just to keep on going. Just to know that there's people out there praying for me gives me all the encouragement that I need to press on. The cost to provide housing, counseling, and other recovery services to a student in our program is over $1,400 each month. Most students can never afford to pay that out of pocket, so our ministry is supported by gifts from friends, families, churches, our vocational training programs, and the generous support of donors like you. For $35 a month, you can sponsor a student and your entire gift will help provide recovery services to your student. By committing just $35 a month, 
you can help to change the life and future of a Teen Challenge student. To become a student sponsor, simply fill out a sign-up form, visit us on the web at tctexas.org, or give us a call to start supporting a student at your local Adult and Teen Challenge campus today. All right. Uh, so next up, I'm bringing uh, my brother, Fernando. Uh, Fernando has, has been an uh, associate as well. And I just want to say that he, he mentioned earlier he's a part of what's called restoration. Restoration is something I've been through myself where you've gone through and you've hit a hiccup in life and you need to get refocused. Um, and so I really appreciate the fact, again, that Teen Challenge continues to be a support system for anybody that needs it. And uh, he's a living testimony, so I want him to share his testimony with you guys for just a second. Hi, guys, again. My name's Fernando. Uh, <coughs> just uh, my testimony, I guess I'll start. You know, I grew up, uh, my testimony starts like most people who struggle with addictions, you know. Uh, my childhood was very turbulent, to say the least. I grew up in a very abusive household uh, for the first seven years of my life. Um, and I went from being uh, bullied and beat up by my dad to being bullied and beat up because I didn't speak any English in the city where we moved to where I finally got out of that abusive relationship. So that was awesome. <laughs> and then I um, went from there, swearing up and down from age seven that I would never touch alcohol in my life just because I saw what it would do to people. And, uh, you know, I did well, well enough until I was 15 years old and I was in high school and uh, I don't know what happened. I decided to touch alcohol and it was just an immediate downfall. Like uh, I turned into a problem right away. Uh, you know, the generic stuff, jail, uh, drunk driving, fights, accidents, all sorts of crazy stuff for a good portion of time. I mean, I, uh, addiction took about 12, uh, 12 and a half years out of my life. Uh, when I was 25 years old, I just remember I was sitting in the church parking lot of a church just like this, right outside, having a few more drinks before I went in uh, for service, you know, to try to put on this front that I was, uh, I was okay. I was like a, what they, what I like to call a functioning addict. Uh, I never, on the outside, everything looked fine. I had a car, I had an apartment, everything was fine. I had, you know, good relationships, and uh, socially everything was okay, but inside everything was just tore up, and I was, uh, I walked into church that day, and Teen Challenge was there, and outreach just like this one, and I heard the testimonies, I just remember crying, and uh, God really touched my heart that day, because before that, I had no relationship with the Lord uh, to speak of, you know, I just was going to church, because my aunts were inviting me, and I didn't want to be rude. I didn't know anything about God. I, I rarely paid attention in services. And so finally, I found out about the program and planted a seed that day. I didn't go right away. It took me another about a year of pounding my head into the wall. And uh, finally, it came into the program when I had just like hit rock bottom, uh, lost everything, everything. Everything was gone. I was uh, homeless. I was had no car, had no job. I had nothing, you know, and I, I just uh, reached out and God, you know, like, my aunt had texted me that day again, was like, remember about Teen Challenge? And I was like, okay. So I went and surrendered very early into the program in my life. And I went through the whole program. Uh, I did a seventh month program and then I did the associates program like Rusty's going through right now, which I was actually the first graduate and uh, teaches you a lot about the Bible and stuff. So that was really awesome. And then I came on, did my internship, came on to staff and where I fell, which is like what I, I like to tell people and warn people is that anybody can fall at any point if you stop, if you keep, if you lose your focus, it doesn't matter if you've been clean 10 years, been with God 10 years, if you lose your focus on that, it's very easy to just go right back down. And that's what happened. I lost my focus. I, I stopped doing the things I had learned throughout the program to do. I ended up trying to lean on my own understanding. Oh, I got enough time. I've been here two and a half years. I can leave. And I fell on my face that very first night, like the very first night I left, I fell straight on my face and then it just hardened my heart and uh, just stayed out of the program for a whole year. And then finally, like, I mean, I, more arrests and more drama and more everything, you know, and uh, finally just decided one day I was like, I got to go back, you know, because God just kept calling me back, calling me back. He kept me out of so much trouble and so many things. And he called me back, and I made it back this time, and I'm not leaving this time, so <laughs> y'all hopefully see me again next year, and <laughs> that's, I'll be in Spencer's spot. That's all I got.
What comes to mind with that is what the enemy meant for evil, God uses for good. And there is so much power in a testimony. Uh, again, like the past is the past, but we can use our hiccups in this life to help impact lives ahead. And so I hope that through this, there was some encouragement. I, I want to also go back to the way I started in the beginning with Romans 15, 13, and remind you, it says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you do one thing. You got to trust him. You got to trust him with your full life, not part of your life, your whole life. It also says that he has the plans for the best path for your life. Not a perfect path, but the best path. And so just let it be some encouragement to continue to press into him and to trust him. Uh, we will be out here uh, after service. If you'd like to talk to any of us, we'd love to again to pray with you guys. Uh, please stop by and check us out. But before that, we would also like to bless Pastor Lee with a cross that we have from our wood shop. Uh, we really, again, just truly appreciate the honor and privilege to be able to come out here and to share what God is doing in and through our lives. And we appreciate the continued support that is offered from this church and the congregation. So thank you guys so much. So Rusty, that is the cross. Awesome. Great. Thank you, Pastor. Really, really appreciate you. And then I would like to pray with you guys right now. I'm not closing this bad boy out, but I would like to pray with you guys. So, uh, Father, I just uh, I thank you fully for this opportunity to come and to spend time with your people, Lord. I just thank you for the strength, for the courage, for the life lessons that you've placed before us where you can make the mess of our life become a message and a testimony for your goodness and your glory, Lord. And so I just thank you for your unending power that you have to transform, to renew, to restore store to reconcile people just like us and so lord i just pray that if anybody's questioning your power lord that they can look at us and they can see that you are currently doing miracles left and right lord so may the steps that we take be guided by you may your will not our will be done lord and may we just put you first in each and every single thing that we do so i just love you and i always will i believe in you and i always will and i trust in you and I always will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't we appreciate these guys coming and sharing their stories? Amen. Appreciate y'all very much. I do want to encourage you to, to go out to the table, to uh, look at everything that they have. Uh, give any way that you can. You cannot outgive God. If you are generous, then God will take care of you. Amen. And uh, amen. <clears throat> y'all still awake? Amen. So you talk about money, it just goes, boom, right? Uh, God has all the money in the world. You don't have to worry about it. You can give as he directs you, and he will supply everything that you need. Amen? So I want to encourage you to do that. I'm going to ask if Juliana will come up here real quick. And uh, this is a, a, a good day to hear from Teen Challenge, but a little bit of a sad day. Today is Juliana's last Sunday with, her, with, with us, not with you, because you are you, but uh, with us. And I just wanted you to be able to share just a minute with everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Lee. I want to start first by saying how blessed I have been over these past five months to be with all of you. You are truly a loving, caring congregation that fulfills your mission of loving one another and caring for one another as Jesus would. So it has been such a blessing to be with you. Second, I want to uh, share that when I left my national position in Washington, D.C., after 25 years of ministry, I left for three reasons. One, to be able to preach the gospel, and uh, two, to be able to care for hurting people, and three, to care for my brother. And I, after a lot of prayer and discernment, um, really struggling with, have accepted a position um, at the Arizona State Hospital, so not a church, but the Arizona State Hospital offered me a position where I will have an opportunity to preach every Sunday till about 60 of the what they say right now, about 60 of the uh, 300 patients come to that service. It's a Christian service. And all 300 patients there are court committed, either because they're a danger to themselves, a danger to others, or through the criminal justice system. So I'll be you know, certainly caring for hurting people that need Jesus. And my brother, for whom I care also, is um, able to, to move with me um, to Phoenix. So um, I really feel this is God's leading. It breaks my heart to leave all of you, but I know that 
I will be wanting to keep in touch with you. I assure you my prayers are with you as I pray for the vision which our Lord has given to Pastor Lee and wanting to see these 10 campuses come to fruition. My prayers are with you, and I um, just really appreciate your prayers for me. Thank you. Thank you, Juliana. You made a, a big impact in a short amount of time for such a small person, too. Uh, well, it's going to be sad to see her go. When, when you leave today, please go by Teen Challenge, talk with Juliana. If it is your first time here, we're very glad that you're here. We want to connect with you. If you go back in the back, uh, Lance and Anna are back there. We want to connect with you. We have a gift for you. Uh, I would also remind you with our launch teams, we have two things coming up real quick. On June 4th, we're going to be having, um, uh, June 5th, excuse me, I don't know, sometime in June, right? I'm getting all these things a little bit confused. June 5th, we'll be having our celebration service in Divine at the Divine Campus. So that's a time of kind of celebrating the past and kind of giving people the vision for the, the future. And then the day before, which will be June 4th, okay, for our Leon Springs Campus, we're going to be organizing to learn how to use the portable church. So we still need people for these campuses. If you want to be on the launch team, please do so. Stand up. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, it is a privilege and honor to be with you and to gather with our brothers and sisters in the Lord. We thank you for the testimonies we've heard today. We thank you for the ministry of Juliana. Lord, we thank you that uh, we have this wonderful church family where we are loved and where we can love. We pray blessing upon every person who is here, no matter what they're going through. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said together, amen. May the Lord bless you. You are dismissed. <laughs>